Raj. How are you? Uh, hello. I'm fine. How are you? Okay, I'm doing good. And I welcome all our audience to this ninth episode of Pots Chat. And here we are trying to bridge the gap between the research fraternity and the common people. So today we have Raj Upadhyay, who is a student of uh, masters, and he's doing his masters in physics at IASC. Raj, I request you to please introduce yourself briefly. Uh, I'm a master's student at uh, IACS, Indian Association for the Cultivation of Science. Currently, I'm in the second year, and I'm doing a project in modified theories of gravity. That's great. That's great. So, can you tell us about like where were you raised and okay. how were you as a child? Uh, I was normal, average child. Uh, I liked uh, maths and maths and science a lot. I actually used to solve problems with my father. He also likes maths and science. He's an like a, he's an electrical engineer. So, I used to love doing maths and science problems. With him. He used to just formulate the question which was in the syllabus and just ask me to solve it. And when something or the other goes wrong, we would both discuss it, and it was very fine. Later, when after uh, I joined 11th, 12th, as everyone does here, uh, yeah. there was there is always a uh, like, uh, if you are good at something and it's in science, so people usually go for engineering. Yeah. So right. at that time also, I decided to go for engineering. I got the college, but uh, at that time in 11th, 12th, I met physics. And uh, from that time, I liked doing physics, but I didn't have a particular, uh, what you can say, uh, affection to it like not like today and i have it's uh, towards affection so in 11 12th i started reading a lot of popular science books and uh, a lot of public lectures so that gave a gave a brain worm to me like uh, why these guys are only saying according to this and this they are not giving me mathematical proofs or anything so what i did was uh, i was tired of hearing those so I just searched a graduate level book on physics and I started reading this and I enjoyed it. Uh, this was the time I really liked to do physics. So, so in, uh, first, what was your major in engineering? Uh, mechanical engineering. Okay. So, and do you see any moment in your life where you really thought that, yeah, this is the moment where I should go into physics as a career? Uh, yes, after the first two years of engineering, that was like the basic mathematical learning part. The, I learned most of the mathematics which was required in physics, like in particular in quantum mechanics, not in other areas. So that time I was thinking like this is the region where I can flourish. I like those regions. I thought that uh, this is the part which I like the most, like engineering is a good field, but I wouldn't do it very much after I seen what is in the physics. So I wanted to physics. I wanted to do physics more than that. So I decided that after do yeah after studying those I would do just physics only. So later I later on I started uh, reading other subjects in physics like electrodynamics. And, uh, there is like uh, very good lectures on YouTube by Balakrishnan sir. And after BTEC was completed. I gave PGRE exam for abroad, but uh, I didn't have any research work. And in third year, I tried to get in contact with the, some faculties from Mumbai University. But that time, I had a very basic background in physics. So I wasn't getting any research work that time. After I got into ISES, uh, I got uh, uh, I thought that I could get an reasonable amount of uh, collaboration and research experience over here. Yeah. But this COVID situation shortened the period very much. Yeah. So, till date, I don't have that much research experience that I wanted to because everything was just shortened. It is a bit difficult to do graduate studies and research at the same time because uh, it's a bit diff different than engineering is what I felt. So, like as you know, physics is a really broad field. 
so what are your research interests and like what makes you you know like you really think yeah this is the field i want to go in uh yes physics is a very broad subject initially when i joined iscs there were only two topics in my mind that uh, gravity and particle physics but after joining iscs i came to know that there are much more areas where theoretical physics can be done so during this i started thinking about some ideas i started thinking about things so my current research interest are in still in gravity also gravity itself particle physics also statistical field theory because i have a long term plan which i want to a long term uh, what do i say and say research research project i want to work on but i don't have yet the knowledge to do that okay so you know like engineering is definitely a hectic life so during your engineering you definitely studied for your syllabus and you had to cover the physics syllabus for the competitive exam so how did you manage that uh, exactly my uh, most of my research was was uh, interest driven so i took nptel courses for nuclear and particle physics i did quantum mechanics separately after that i did special relativity the thing is the most important one of the important subjects is statistical physics i didn't do that that much uh, rigorously because i had didn't had interest in that so i took a year long gap i thought that uh, this would uh, i would be able to do the entrance exam very well for jam just and uh, jam and just particularly so what i did was uh, took a year long gap and i studied statistical physics specifically for that also in my engineering time i got to got in contact with one of the professors over there so i used to go to uh, his lectures uh, his public lectures actually but those were actually graduate level here lectures so he invited me to come so i learned uh, uft with a part in path integral approach over there okay. so that was the main part and after that for entrance exam i took a, i told myself that i cannot uh, continue the lectures now from now on. so i would have to perform well in jam exam so i uh, tried to do perform in the jam exam but didn't go as it, as it was planned okay so can you describe your research work in uh, simple words like uh, what exactly are you working in and what's the goal Uh, in 2009 there was a theory named galileon's uh, which was an effective theory from uh, dgp model uh, dgp model is an uh, simple words uh, so difficult to explain a little bit but it is uh, it gives an effective uh, theory of gravity in terms of scalar fields okay so my research current research work is based on you the techniques which are developed in particle physics and apply it on uh, this uh, galileanian physics okay so it seems that you are basically interested in theoretical physics right yes so, so uh, earlier it was just a decision like you know i need i want to go in theoretical physics or experimental physics i did mechanical engineering and my major part of mechanical engineering was to do with experiments so i did right. uh, in fact my btech project was in research in material science So I designed the entire thing, and I know what to do in experimental physics. I didn't know what to do in theoretical physics. So, but the equations really made sense to me. Like when I first read the basics of quantum mechanics. So there is always there is completeness theorem. There are uh, Gram-Schmidt procedure. I was blown away by those just simple ideas, just logical reasoning and everything. So I thought that theoretical physics is the is main research uh, is my main motive right now so okay. if from btech project so i know what to do in experimental i want to so i know what to do in theoretical so i can think i can bridge the gap between them that's great that's great uh so you told about your father who who was electrical who is an electrical engineer right so do you have yeah. any other person in your family who is into pure sciences or a research uh not particularly my cousins are there one of the cousins is in commerce one of the cousins is in it sector okay. but uh, not really in uh, research field one of my uh, uh what you can say a long relatives are in research field he is in ipr okay 
but uh, mostly not everyone is in the research field my grandfather was a teacher for blind people okay. so there is teaching but uh, there is no uh, there is very little in research uh, so whom do you admire you know any personality or any scientist who you consider as your role model uh, there are actually many uh, one of them is professor balakrishnan okay. his teaching skills his teaching uh, methods so he really puts things in perspective he tells us what are the important things which are to be remembered which are to be uh, really learned and another one is uh, professor uh, padmanaman sir sanu padmanaman sir yeah he is teaching style he is also very same and very logical reasoning so these are these two actually as our role models like uh, there was one scene where the professor uh, 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 professor balakrishnan was going to give an uh, colloquium at bits pilani so i was uh, usually i i forget most of the colloquium meetings but this one i remembered i got the link to join i was trying for half an hour but i didn't join i wasn't able to join and another was to actually meet uh, professor pandaraman sir but unfortunately he passed away this year um so briefly how can you describe your typical day at iisc uh, iscs is a good place uh, for the researchers you can talk to the faculty whenever you want but uh, the thing is like uh, it becomes very hectic uh, so the thing is i wake up at 8 uh, i do my daily chores get the get to the lectures like from 10 to 11, from 10 to 5 Okay. For some days it goes till six thirty also, so then I take a little bit of rest and then I study. Most of the time I do my research only because I don't have much time for other subjects. Yeah. Uh, so what I do is like I solve the assignments and basically what I want to achieve is like to do more of a self study kind of a thing, like build my own notes uh, because it is very easy that when someone teaches. Uh, okay. in the flow you just go away you just go away and then as there are some caveats which are not visible to you directly so right. what i try to do is like learn those things independently and i try to make a connection from this side to this side this side to this side and if i have some doubts i ask the next day with the professor the thing is like i have four subjects over here so it little bit gets hectic with the theoretical project okay So, uh, what is your long-term goal? Where do you see yourself in maybe five years or ten years? Uh, I want to. Uh, what I can say is like I want to teach the physics the way I learned it because uh, I liked it very much. I read lots of uh, books, but it's not still enough. So, right. and the thing is, I like to develop my own intuition. not the intuition that professor gives you or or anyone gives you gives it, gives it to you the yeah. professor job is to teach and he is good at it but yeah. the student's job is to really learn the subject find out what are the important points in that so i want to just give that uh, teaching experience to everyone so one of the things is to become a theoretical physics professor okay for a long term goal but let's see what we where we can get with that um so another question would be like uh, you have experienced academia at least on a basic level right so do you think that academia requires a change or any kind of improvement uh, what i have seen in foreign universities and in india is that the advanced subjects like uh, gravity quantum field theory these are very advanced subjects and for few audio a few even students it becomes tougher for them to learn so the thing is that they can a little bit change the curriculum level for to really capture the important points of the subjects and then uh, devise a new method for giving those uh, exams for those subjects because still today we are getting on uh, the same semester patterns in but in foreign universities there are a little bit changes they take like 3 to 4 vivas in the subjects they took assignments in the subjects and it's done so i think that should be incorporated over here also the thing is like uh, <clears throat> uh 
that ICS you have to find a funding of uh, uh, at uh, funding of your own in most of the cases because the thing is like uh, uh, it is always a wish of a professor that how many students he want to take and the other thing is like uh, institute quota is very less okay so a professor uh, a senior professor can most probably take six uh, six students or uh, six from six six students four would be from jr and two would be from institute fellow so that's the problem so even if you are in the program for acquiring phd i need to have a net score currently so like you have taken up physics definitely for your interest but you know every job has something or the other which sometimes becomes monotonous so do you see anything in your uh, research life which you think is monotonous and you can make that more interesting uh one of the monotonous things which you can get is like uh, not solving the problem you can try all day but you cannot solve the problem so thing is like you can spend some time with your friends you can build some hobbies and usually i like to do i like to play chess so there are few people over here with similar interest so i call them i ask them to play chess if they are interested so this way you can actually get your life a little bit more interesting also the thing is like in theoretical physics there is a uh, like very much to learn it's not that uh, even though you are doing theoretical physics it's not like even in your lifetime you can master everything yeah so it's every day there is a new thing to learn in the research for theoretical physics is what i believe really. i don't know much about experimental okay um so another question would be like you did uh, your bachelor's in engineering right and you mentioned that you could not gain much of research experience in physics so any advice to the students who are currently in engineering and plan to shift to physics any advice for them what they could do actually uh, one of the advice i would give is like to convince their uh, management the engineering management okay. because the thing is like when i was in my engineering period i really wanted to do a project in physics a final year project so what i did was went to the college dean so and i asked this question that if what if i do the final year project from a faculty who is from a different school or different program or anything like that so what he told me was uh, you can do that but the thing is like what you do you cannot directly submit it over here Okay. So he want he tell he told me that you have to do something extra, but that becomes a little bit more hectic after like right. suppose uh, uh, there is a this is the twelfth month period, and you are giving eight months over there, and then you are you have to do something more in those four months to submit it over here. So it is a little bit more hectic. Like it's like doing that eight works eight months study in like in those four years again, and right. so something to improve those things. So the I can. Uh, suggest that this thing would be a little bit reduced that if, what if we do the same stuff over there and submit it over here take right. a means uh, take a dual professor dual guide like one guide from the college itself and another guide from where you are doing the phd uh, doing your project work so that way you can actually do some uh, good research work also one of the things which i would say is like if you are if you like if you uh, what i can say if you realize that physics is for you at a for suppose second or third year then try to get as many as uh, summer schools and summer internship from that time in the vacation period it really helps yeah and another thing is like you appeared for jam right yeah okay so you had to cope up with the mechanical engineering syllabus which is definitely vast because even i am pursuing mechanical engineering so for physics you need to cover there is a lot of syllabus even for jam so how did you manage those studies like you have midterms you have endterms and the study for competitive no, exams as i said that i took a year gap for that okay uh, yeah and one of the things it like one of the things it like uh, i was driven by my research interest so i knew quantum mechanics i knew classical mechanics okay. i knew semiconductor physics up to a certain point the thing i didn't knew was statistical physics so i gave most of my time to statistical physics after okay. that i just got some uh, previous papers and then just start solving okay. so 
uh, when you do that thing, it is like if you don't get any subject uh, question or question in the uh, question paper. So what you can do is directly go to that subject, give it a quick read and give it a quick go, and then again go to the question. So this way you can get the subject really done fast. Also, okay. there is a uh, there is this thing that you have very good problem solving skills for the examination. Yeah. So yeah. one thing you can do is this. Another thing you do is just uh, forget what you are doing for a certain amount of time in B Tech. And then uh, again, do it again after the exams. Yeah. So another thing, like you have done your mechanical engineering and now you're in physics. So do you see any collaboration between these two fields that, you know, this can be the junction point and this is where the thing can become interdisciplinary? Yeah, actually that is because the thing is like the theoretical physics, there are uh, totally different things. Uh, and in mechanical engineering, it is a totally different thing. Yeah. In mechanical engineering, you don't ignore constants in the equation. But in theoretical physics, you will see in much of the books that they take h cross equals to 1, c equals to 1, the speed of light equals to 1. Okay. So when I see that there is a, definitely a bridge. So what you can do is you can, uh, being from both the departments, you know the flavor of both the things. So yeah. in any of the projects like collider physics or anything like that, you there is an easy entry point for you because you know the, both of the things you can manage to convert one thing into another, it is good for you. Yeah. So that is a very good plus point. Okay. Uh, so another thing, like uh, uh, there are many things in particle physics, right? You told about gravity and you told about the collaboration you want to make. So any other field which interests you in particle physics itself or in some other field, uh, the another thing which interests me a lot, but I, uh, I haven't took it yet in the electives or anything, is statistical field theory. Okay. Because uh, uh, what we do in thermodynamics is totally different than what the thermodynamics is required in uh, uh, QCD, uh, QCD in, in, uh, uh, in quantum chromodynamics, I believe. Yeah, yeah, quantum chromodynamics. So, but the uh, yeah, quantum chromodynamics. Uh, and electrodynamics. Uh, what I'm into say is a system where the gas is not an idle gas. Okay. Yeah, the gas is not an idle gas, and uh, there are bosons, fermions interacting. There is whole mess over there. Okay. So that is also an interesting thing because there are phase transitions, uh, okay. things such as phase transitions, and those are very non-trivial. And these things can develop new phenomena. So what I was saying that there is an emergent emergent effects which are not seen in a particular section. For example, in particle physics, usually there is calculation of cross sections, phenomenology and everything. But when you use those things in uh, cosmology or in QCD phase transition, QCD phase transition is actually a part of cosmology itself. Okay. So those things are also very interesting because it gives us the idea that how was our early universe interested so there are many, many things such as this. There is a long-term project of mine also, but okay. it requires a very more, much more, uh, uh, what we can say, tools which I don't understand yet. Okay, okay. So, you know, now, nowadays or maybe from uh, the past decade, computational physics also has been on the rise. So in your work, uh, is it purely the mathematical calculations on paper or do you even use computational physics? Currently, I just do mathematical computation on paper, but I, have, I do have an interest in computational physics as well. Okay. In, from uh, engineering point of, in, from engineering uh, perspective, when I was in engineering, so they teach us everything like uh, C, C++, uh, Python also sometimes. Yeah. Uh, most of the time I learned MATLAB also. Okay. So the thing is like I wanted to apply it on the numerical techniques, which also they teach us in the college thing is like sometimes they just teach us numerical techniques separately and this programming language separately. So that time I wanted to apply both of them together. So what I used to do is like build my small, my own small projects, such as you know a particular subject in statistical physics, suppose uh, two state, uh, two state or multi-state bosonic systems. So what I used to do was to try to model those systems in uh, computer, computer language 
or do something with it. Uh, for last uh, in previous years, what I did was to uh, perform a scattering like project. But these are my separate uh, separate uh, personal projects. These aren't okay. to do with the academic project. Okay. So these things also give you a real perspective that what you are going to do in uh, and what you are going to do in computational physics as well. Also, this also develops your uh, coding skill uh, skills as well. Coding skills and algorithm skills because these are the totally two different things. One, uh, like if someone says that he is learning machine learning, but if what if you are not able to apply it, that it's totally waste, right? Yeah. So that is that was my perspective. So, but still you learn particle physics and everything, uh, particle physics, classical mechanics. But are are you able to model those things through a computer? That was one of the questions and one of the targets for me. So what I did earlier was to do those computations and post it on my Instagram. But due to the extra coursework which I am having right now, I am not able to do those. Okay. Recently, I was just able to simulate a bosonic system. Okay. But I haven't public, uh, I haven't put it out anything right now at on my Instagram. That's interesting. So, uh, moving toward the end of this podcast. The last question I would like to ask is, what life lesson would you like to give to our audience? You know, something which you think that everyone should know. Uh, one of the life lessons is that when you encounter any failures, that there is nothing good left in you, or you are not able to do this, just throw it out of the window because it is not like that. Yeah. Because the thing is, like when I gave my jam exam. I was sure that I would get a definitely get a good rank, but uh, what the rank what I got was very less, and I was like uh, dejected. But like I was like very low, it became very low in my life. So I was literally searching for a alternative jobs to do, and again apply for the next year. Okay. But my father said that uh, if what if not IIT, then do somewhere else which is equally nice. That equally that has some richest research perspective for yourself. Yeah. So then I took the jam score. First, I applied to NIT. I got the NIT. Then one of my friends suggested me that there is an another college, which also gives you a stipend. Uh, so I applied over there with the same jam score. I got to the interviews. I gave the interview. I got selected over there also. The faculty was a better, good than the NIT. So I joined over there. Okay. Later, after that time, the ISCS forms came out. Indian Association for the Cultivation of Science. So I gave the exam. Again, I was called for an interview, and I got the interview. So this is the place which gets, uh, which is like very good for a student doing master's project, because you also get a stipend, and then there is also an ex exit option program plan over here, okay. which is not uh, actually in the ICERs or uh, TIFR. Okay. Uh, lately, I don't know what is the situation over there. But earlier it was like uh, you have to do three years masters and one year for entire project. Thing is the uh, here I have to do two years masters only, okay. not three years, and the final year will have project itself. That's interesting. So the, so the yeah. thing is like whenever you encounter any failure, don't just panic, don't don't just lose confidence in yourself. Yeah. Just remember your love for the subject and do those things. Learn whatever the learn whatever uh, interests you the most. For me, currently, it's uh, QFT and gravity. So that's the thing. Okay. That's everyone has a yeah, yeah. Everyone has a plan, but what if that plan doesn't work? Right. You have to take another options also, and it is not that. It is sometimes also a luck factor over there that hmm. it is wasn't supposed like you tried your best but didn't get it. Uh, okay. I actually had a plan for master's program as well, but uh, the COVID thing really messed it up. Yeah, yeah, COVID was really a havoc, and yeah. we are still trying to get out of that. So let's yeah. hope for the best. And yeah. it was really nice talking to you, Raj. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Hope you loved the episode. Subscribe to our show and see you next Saturday.